gave his life for the Lord, so I'm thankful for that. But I had that kind of a, a life, so it really, I was an angry young man that God called to be a pastor. And, but it took me a long time, even as a pastor, before he took away all that anger in my life, and I'm so thankful. And you know, sanctification is an ongoing prof process. Please pray for me. <laughs> um, but anyway, as far as Dan, I could see Amy starting to come. She wanted what God wanted. Kind of a dream of her little girlhood was to get married and have children. You know, that was a dream. The Lord reminded her of that. Anyway, about that same time, Dan was graduating from our Bible college. And he was one of my favorite students because he was so diligent and he got A's and he was athletic and he was just this great guy. And he was almost like we were becoming like, you know, like I was like a father figure a little bit with him and, and it's grown. And so anyway, um, I thought to myself, wow, man, Amy would love this guy. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I was thinking, man. <laughs> Now, hey, you guys believe in arranged marriages, right? Yeah. Anyway, God arranged it. Not me, not Wayne. But Kathy and I liked the idea. But what we did, I think I told you this story last time. I said, Amy, you got to meet this guy. And she goes, oh. And I told her a little bit about him. She goes, well, yeah, boy. What do you think? And I said, well, let's all go to a movie. She said, that's weird. <laughs> but we did <laughs> they became friends and then it was, it's just a cool story but Dan came in to her life and Dan you had a bit of a hard time at first and then kind of maybe tell a little bit of your story briefly yeah um, so I, I just want to challenge us to always keep our heart open to people that may, we might have a hard time keeping our heart open to keep your heart open to love and to Maybe go against some of your own, your own thoughts or your own maybe promises you made to yourself. So I kind of, I was raised, like Wayne was saying, I, I was raised by a single mom. My dad was um, not in my life from like age six on. And so I was, you know, raised in church, kind of a goody two shoes, kind of like Wayne. So a little bit legalistic, you know, and I remember telling myself that I would never marry someone who had, you know, had sex or been with another man. I would never marry or date a girl who, had not been pure her whole life and you know that's legalistic because obviously I you know growing up and throughout my whole life I'd struggle with lust and impurity so you know just because I hadn't had sex with a woman didn't mean I was impure but um, I kind of had that mindset that I wanted this perfect like Christian woman and you know I didn't have my heart open to anything else and then I you know met Amy and found out she had been with guys and girls so I was like oh <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I want to just throw this out the door. I'm done with this. I'm not even give a chance. <laughs> but we had such a sweet friendship that I told you to that. be honest to you. <laughs> we had such a sweet friendship. And we had, you know, had this ministry we were starting and writing songs together. And I just really had a heart for her that it would have been completely stupid for me to do that. It would have been outside of God's will, I believe, and I would have totally missed out, you know, on something great that God had for me, and um, he kind of softened my heart and helped me to see my own sin, too, and not just, you know, think I was some pure, perfect, you know, Christian boy, because I wasn't, um, even though I'd never had a girlfriend, and I, you know, waited for the one, and I ended up being Amy, um, and kind of sidetracking a little bit, too, I, I also saw, thought at a certain time that I could never be a friend you know, be a close friend of the gay guy. It's like, how would that ever work out? And we actually just bought a house two years ago next to a gay couple. And I'm not kidding, he's like one of my best friends now. <laughs> he's like this older guy and he's super sweet. He loves my boys, he gives them gifts. He's just the sweetest guy. We're kind of working on him. We've, we're, we've been trying to get him to church and but most of all, just loving him and keeping an open heart. And I think we, it's kind of an example of just like a legalistic, know closed hearted church is you know for just don't keep our, our heart open to loving the people around us and loving the people that we don't want to love you know we're going to miss out big time on awesome things god has for us and in this case going back to our relationship um i had to accept some of that hurt because i was personally hurt by her past and um you know god just showed me that 
you know, he has a plan and to trust him and to not let that, you know, make me down or make me you know, feel sad, but he's going to, he's going to work it out and that it's going to be good. So I just had to trust God and, and let him lead us in our relationship. So it's kind of yeah. weird. It's kind of weird how we always kind of put ourselves in Hosea's position when most of us are actually his wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that true? You know, yeah. and, and maybe it's not in sexual sin, or you know, it might, you you may have your own personal brand of brokenness that that you would say, "Well, I'm not like that." But, <laughs> but in fact, we're all wayward. We're all rebellious. We all do sin. In case you didn't know, the Bible says that all have sin and all have short of glory. God, so you're the one that doesn't think you have, you actually have because you're prideful and arrogant. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she, Amen? Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is super healthy for us, church. And here's why. Because when you can love people who are broken, you can love you. Because we're all broken. You know, the church is really a hospital that's filled with sick people helping sick people. Amen? <laughs> Isn't that true? You know, it's like we're all wandering around. Okay, you be the doctor today because I need help, and tomorrow we're all helping each other. And and we we miss the opportunity. And and let me be really clear here. This is not acceptance of that which God doesn't accept. This isn't saying sin's okay. This is saying broken people need love. Broken people don't need a tongue lashing.